Hi guys, welcome to another Living SATV video. Today we will know what happened to the Campton Park Hospital. Stay tuned. Okay, so to give you guys a little bit of a background story. So the other day I was actually reading some articles about Campton Park um, Hospital and why it closed. And I actually found out this video that I'm going to show you now. And the video is not mine, it's from a channel called uh, Barely Sociable, a channel with 700,000 subscribers and it was, they compiled a lot of information and the video actually came out really well. So if you guys are curious about why the Campton Park uh, Hospital closed, stay tuned. Abandoned buildings are definitely captivating in their own unique way. There's something about seeing a building lost to time that makes you feel a mixture of emotions. You might wonder as to what stories are left untold and what people visited there. I know for myself personally, seeing a Kmart or Toys R Us turned into a ghost town is enough to evoke a sort of nostalgic frizzin. Unlike Toys R Us or Kmart, the building we're going to be looking into went out of operation in a much more mysterious way. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the mystery of the Kempton Park Hospital. The tale of the Kempton Park Hospital is one shrouded in mystery. If you look online, you'll see multiple dates for its opening, ranging from 1976 to 1978. There's very little documented info on this hospital as a whole, but what we do know is that Kempton Park is nine stories tall, and at the time of its operating, it had 350 beds. Keep in mind, this is no small hospital in the middle of nowhere. The location is a mere 30-minute drive outside of Johannesburg, and it was regarded as a staple in its community. Kempton Park was well-equipped, with top-of-the-line equipment and quite a bit of money went into its operation. As far as we know, everything was running smoothly until one fateful day. On December 26, 1996, the hospital closed its doors to new patients and no statement was given. All the staff was moved out at some undisclosed time in 1997, and there was no further explanation. The building went from a state-of-the-art facility to a ghost town. Interestingly enough, Kempton Park was marked as quarantined and it was later fenced off. Locked inside were millions in medical equipment and thousands of confidential patient files all abandoned. To this day, the South African government has done nothing to it since it initially closed its doors, leading many to speculate as to what actually happened. Many of the valuable contents have been looted, while thousands of personal patient files now sit scattered across the ground. All of this is incredibly eerie, so what happened to the Kempton Park Hospital? Why did everyone just pack up shop without any explanation? When it comes to closing a major hospital, you'd think the government would have a concise reason to do so. Yet, in the case of Kempton Park, that couldn't be further from the reality. After looking through all the media publications and statements on the matter, it's incredibly convoluted. I should mention that to this day, the place has guards there 24-7 on payroll. The guards are instructed to keep the place secure from any trespassers, but they're very well known to take bribes. Despite all of this security, it's turned into a bit of a tourist attraction for the locals. On YouTube specifically, you can find a wide array of video logs from people actively touring the facility. Many people are interested in this location for its quote-unquote paranormal activity, but for myself personally, I'm not interested in that side of things. The real phenomenon to study here is why this place actually closed in the first place, because all of the events leading up to its closure seem incredibly suspicious. In order for us to get to the bottom of things, I'd like to give you every little detail I could find on the web to come up with the real reason for the mysterious evacuation. One of the lesser known things about Kempton Park is that of one of the doctors that worked there. 
Andre Esterheisen was a high school dropout that posed as a pediatrician at Kempton Park Hospital for years on end. After his trial, he admitted to posing as a qualified doctor in 1982 all the way to 1990, and he went on to treat thousands of patients with no formal qualifications. According to the Kempton Express on an article on the matter, it reads the following. During his trial in Kempton Park Regional Court, Abield reported on the sad stories of babies who deteriorated daily and eventually died while under his care. One mother told the court her baby ended up with cerebral palsy after Esther Heisen did four lumbar punches on the child while she was only four months old. Another mother who testified against him said her daughter was born in April of 1988. She was normal, but a month later the baby fell ill. A doctor diagnosed meningitis and referred her to Dr. Esterheisen. He confirmed the diagnosis and the girl was placed in an oxygen tank at Kempton Park Hospital. He later put up a drip by making a small incision in the baby's chest as he could not find a vein. Her lungs collapsed. Two days later, the baby girl was transferred to Johannesburg Hospital. It was later discovered she had suffered brain damage. She eventually died in Johannesburg as a result of kidney failure. Esterheisen also diagnosed meningitis in another four-month-old girl in 1988. He did a lumbar punch and prescribed medicine. As she deteriorated, he changed her medication and a brain scan was done. Thereafter, two more lumbar punches were done by him, which a further scan revealed she had suffered brain damage. The baby was admitted to a home for cerebral palsy sufferers. A baby girl born in July of 1988 at Kempton Park Hospital was very tiny at birth. Esterheisen treated her. At first, the baby did well, but was then put in an oxygen tent because a, quote, problem occurred. She died that same day. Esterheisen was convicted of three counts of culpable homicide, impersonating a doctor, and defrauding patients. He received 18 years in prison, and after that, he was released. To me, this seems like a light sentencing, considering he was a doctor to thousands of patients. As bad as this is, keep in mind the fault shouldn't just lie with Esterheisen, but also with the government as well. I'm not entirely familiar with how things go down in terms of legal liability in South Africa, so I don't know how this would be accounted for in this situation. It's just as much the fault of the government-run facility as it is for someone to pose as a doctor. It wasn't like Esterheisen forged credentials. All he did was tell someone he was a doctor and started working with them. He started his own practice, and when he started to work for Kempton Park, no one questioned him. I'm thoroughly surprised that there was no attempted legal action towards Kempton Park Hospital as a facility because they hired Esterheisen. It's interesting that the files were abandoned and they could have all been used as evidence for negligence of the South African government. In regards to Kempton Park Hospital closing, this situation with Esterheisen was in 1992, However, the hospital closed in 1996. Next, I'd like to see what the South African government or Department of Health has to say about this hospital. The first article I found regarding Kempton Park was from the staff reporter dating back to November 15, 1996. At this time, it seems like there was a backlash in regards to restructuring some of the hospitals in Hao Tang. In case you don't know already, Hao Tang is where Kempton Park is located. Something I should point out with this planned restructuring in 1996 is that the entire goal was to save money. And despite this entire situation being put on hold, Kempton Park was still closed down. What makes this situation even more bizarre is that if you look in the Star Late Edition from 2009 discussing this hospital, it states the following. In December 1996, the Hao Tang Department of Health said no new patients would be admitted due to an acute staff shortage, but denied it was closing the hospital. It was shut in 1997. So not only was the medical restructuring delayed, but they also publicly denied closing the hospital as well. I don't know much about running government hospitals, but if the entire purpose of restructuring the Hao Tang area was to save money, then leaving millions in medical equipment seems like the worst financial decision you could make. An absurd amount of money went into the initial creation of this hospital that was designed to last at least 100 years. Doing this undermines your ultimate goal of saving money in the first place. As far as staff shortages go, when researching the reason for closure, I managed to find an interview with one of the doctors that worked there at the time. 
Let's take a listen. Sadly, it was abandoned uh, with working equipment just left and uh, looted. Uh, it was a government decision to close down the hospital, and undoubtedly um, they just saw the wastage of equipment, beds, incubators, anesthetic machines as just something that didn't, didn't, it didn't phase them. Um, it certainly was not because of staff issues at all. So this doctor was told it was closed for staff shortages as well. I don't see much incentive for a doctor to lie about staff issues whatsoever. This begs the question, is the Tang Department of Health actually telling the truth? If staff shortages were the problem, I hardly see shutting down the entire hospital as the only solution. And if this was some standard hospital closure, then why leave all the confidential patient files inside? You don't need medically trained professionals to put paper in a shredder, not to mention the various human organs that were found left inside the morgue. They had all the time in the world to get rid of those things even after the hospital was closed. The fact that the staff just left things there to rot seems to suggest that they were in a rush to get out or something else was going on. Now, what's interesting here is that this isn't the only public statement the government has given about the hospital. And wait till you hear the other reasoning for closing it down. Kadani Malengu, pardon me if I say that wrong, was a member of the executive council in Hauteng. She was later questioned in an ongoing negotiation over further plans for Kempton Park. Here's the following statement that was written down by the CNS reporter. The excuse for closing the hospital in 1996 was low patient intake. Malengu said the hospital had been shut down because it was underutilized. So which is it? If there was low patient intake, then staffing wouldn't be the issue like we saw before. If the hospital was underutilized, why not just simply cut down on staff rather than shut down the entire hospital? These two reasons that the Department of Health have given on multiple occasions directly contradict each other. Assuming both were true, low staff plus low patient intake should even itself out. Ever since this community lost a hospital, it's been putting pressure on all the other communities in the area. For reference, there's 170,000 people in Kempton Park, and they all mostly go to one hospital in Tembisa. Tembisa is completely overcrowded, with 1,000 admitted patients at one time and only 840 beds. As said previously, this facility was a staple in its community and it's consistently been a hotbed of empty promises. In 2006, plans to reopen the hospital were discussed, but there seems to have been controversy around the tender processes, so that never happened. In 2008, the Hauteng Department of Health said it would make provisions in its 2010 to 2011 budget to reopen the hospital as a 270-bed facility in a public-private partnership. That never happened. In 2012, the department committed itself to renovating the hospital, promising to spend 244 million rand on the revamp. That never happened. Construction was supposed to have started in March 2013, and the revamp was to be completed in July 2014. This also did not happen. In May 2016, Kempton Express reported that the health MEC, Kidnani Malengu, had indicated that the hospital would be demolished and that a new hospital would be built on the site, with work expected to start in 2017. That didn't happen. If there's something we can learn from the Tang Department of Health, it's that they are yet to tell the truth a single time in regards to this whole situation. Since we can't take anything they have to say at face value, any reasoning we come up with is just as valid as theirs for closing the hospital. That being said, let's do some final analysis. One thing I've hinted at throughout this video is the possibility that the hospital had some incident that caused a bunch of people to secretly evacuate. But the fact of the matter is, is that there's absolutely no evidence to suggest anything like that ever happening. Based on all of their actions from leaving the place immediately, you'd think that that would be the most likely cause, but it's just not there. In my opinion, it's very likely that the Tang Department of Health isn't telling the truth. Their story is inconsistent, and their individual reasonings hardly justify shutting the place down. I would lean on the theory of Andre Oosterheisen being the main reason that they had to shut this place down, but the dates don't line up. It's not like the Hauteng Department of Health doesn't get sued every other day. And I should point out that this department has had quite a bit of scandals in the past as well. For example, Kadani Malongo actually resigned after one scandal broke, where 143 people died at one of the psychiatric facilities in Hauteng caused by starvation and neglect. It's not like these public services don't get funding. What actually is happening seems to be more an issue of corruption. In June of 2018, the Hauteng Department of Health was quote-unquote plundered. Corrupt expenditure and fraud totaling 1.2 billion rand was uncovered within the Hauteng Health Department by a special investigating unit. 
This investigation only started in 2006 and dated things going on ever since then. Likely this corruption was going on for a hell of a lot longer. If I had to take a guess at what happened to the Kempton Park Hospital, it would be that of someone trying to reallocate funds to their own wallet instead of the public. Even though there's no deliberate evidence dating back to 1996, if history was to repeat itself like it is today, that seems like the most logical explanation. That being said, this is just conjecture. I'd also like to hear what you guys have to say about this as well. Okay guys, so that was the video. I hope you guys have been in some way clarified as I was, so you guys can have an idea exactly what happened. Um, but like they say, um, it's still a mystery. Who knows? Don't forget, like and subscribe, and see you in the next Living SATV video.